Hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for September 23rd, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. My name is Tim, and I am sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. Uh, what is CircuitPython, you may ask? CircuitPython is a version of Python that is designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Uh, the development for CircuitPython is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from their website at adafruit.com. This meeting gets hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically occurs on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern, 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific, except when that coincides with the U.S. holiday. Uh, in the notes doc, there is a link to a calendar which you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send out notifications for the upcoming meeting via Discord, so if you'd like to receive those notifications, you can ask to be added to that CircuitPythonistas role uh, on Discord, which is the same one that will grant you permission to speak as well, if that's something you'd like to do. Uh, there is a shared notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can contribute to this document beforehand. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we'll post a link for the next week's uh, meeting notes document into that CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. You can always check the pinned messages there throughout the week to find the upcoming uh, notes doc for the next meeting. Uh, if you wish to participate but can't attend, that's no problem. You can leave hug reports and status updates in the document, and you can do that throughout the week as well, and we'll read them uh, off during the meeting if you are not uh, available to do so. Um, the structure of this meeting uh, will be held in five parts. The first part is community news. That's a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items that come from the Python on microcontroller newsletters, uh, which get mailed out uh, on Mondays as well. The second part of our meeting will be the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. That one is a quantitative overview of the entire project, um, separate from our status updates. The third report, uh, excuse me, the third part is uh, hug reports, and that one is the first of our two round robins. The hug reports section uh, is an opportunity to highlight the good, thing good things that folks are doing. You can take a moment to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part uh, in our second um, round robin is status updates. The status updates section is an opportunity to report on what you've been up to. You can take a couple of minutes, talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week. The fifth and final part of the meeting is in the weeds, which is an opportunity for some more long form discussions. Those can either be uh, topics that came out of status updates or they can be identified as head of uh, ahead of time as being something that's too long for status updates. Um, so you can, uh, again, just put those down at the bottom of the notes doc in the, in the weeds section, just list your name and whatever you'd like to discuss there. Uh, and then we'll get to that uh, once the time comes at the end of the meeting. So with that, I will start taking some timestamps for us and kick off the community news. Uh, let me backfill this one real fast so that it makes sense. All right, uh, the first item in the community news this week, um, in the uh, newsletter this week, I should say, is the release of CircuitPython 9.1.4 and CircuitPython 9.2.0 beta zero. Uh, both of these new releases have been uh, published this week. 9.1.4 is the latest bug fix release of CircuitPython and is the new stable release. There are links here that go to the Adafruit blog if you'd like to read more about it, as well as the release notes if you want to see uh, all the details on GitHub. Highlights of this release include uh, on NRF boards, there was a fix for programmatic uh, resetting directly into the boot motor, uh, the boot loader rather. Uh, there was a fix for a BLE storage leak, and there, uh, let's see, looks like clear input after control C on UART REPL boards. Uh, that fixes uh, some USB workflow issues on some devices. So a couple of fixes, a couple of different fixes in this uh, latest stable release of 9.1.4. Uh, and then, of course, the other release was 9.2.0 beta 0. Uh, so that's a beta release for 9.2.0. It has known bugs that will be fixed before the final release of 9.2.0 uh, before that's made official. There are links again to the Adafruit blog if you want to read more about that. And again, the release notes if you want to see all of those details over on GitHub. The highlights for this 9.20 uh, beta release are uh, 
a looks like the same uh, one of the same ones the nrf fix for the programmatic resetting the ble storage fix and the same thing with the uart repl uh, for the usb workflows but uh, in addition to those things in the beta release here we have uh, updating the esp idf to 5.1.3 merging MicroPython updates from version 1.23, uh, Raspberry Pi RP2350 additions and fixes, as well as documentation, um, Espresso PLE improvements, uh, the addition of math.dist function, and underscore EVE module updates. All right, next up we have another new release this week, this one over in the Tiny USB project, uh, Tiny USB 0.17.0 brings some nice enhancements. TinyUSB is an open source cross-platform USB host and device stack for embedded systems designed to be memory safe with no dynamic allocation and thread safe with all interrupt events. Uh, yeah, with all interrupt events are deferred and then handled in the non-ISR task function. Uh, there's a link here to the Adafruit blog. Uh, talking about this release, and uh, again, the high-level updates uh, or uh, highlights, I should say, for this release are uh, rewrite to generalize driver to support non-STM32 uh, microcontrollers, such as the WCH, um, add support for the CH32, uh, in, as an example, the CH32V203, um, max 3421E host support, and added support for USB Video Classic, UVC, with MJPEG. Uh, 71 folks contributed to this release, and the project is MIT licensed. And again, there is a link here over to GitHub if you'd like to see all of those details of the commits and all of those wonderful contributors. Next up, we have a new Pico VS Code extension. The Pico VS Code extension is a Microsoft Visual Studio Code extension designed to make your life easier when creating, developing, and debugging projects for the Raspberry Pi Pico series boards using C, C++, or MicroPython. If you've ever tried to set up an embedded development environment, you know it's no small feat. Beginners often find themselves tangled up in the complexities of build systems, SDKs, and tool chains. There are links here to uh, looks like Raspberry Pi um, over on GitHub and then the Adafruit blog as well if you'd like to read more about this extension. I know we have folks uh, coming into the Discord asking about VS Code all the time, so I imagine there may be some interest in this. Uh, if you, on the other hand, would like to do your CircuitPython editing without actually installing any applications, then the next item will be of interest to you, the online CircuitPython code editor. Uh, with Adafruit's CircuitPython code editor, you can edit code from a web browser. This lets you connect via Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or USB. The editor features autocomplete, a REPL serial monitor, and file management tools. There is a link here to the editor itself at code.circuitpython.org, as well as a link to the Adafruit blog uh, mentioning this tool. Uh, and then lastly, for the community news this week, the uh, item that caught my eye from a bit further down the newsletter this week was uh, in the new notes from Adafruit Playground section, and the note that caught my eye was called Primetime Python. Uh, this was a person who uh, kind of detailed their experiences of using the Circuit Playground Express in order to search for prime numbers. They detailed uh, doing that in a number of different ways, including some improvements uh, to be able to find even more primes than they were able to initially. I thought it was a, a really cool read. So check that out if that sounds interesting to you, uh, and I will tell you next uh, more generally about the newsletter. So all of these items and many more um, you can find in the Python on Microcontrollers weekly newsletter, uh, which is a CircuitPython community run newsletter that's emailed every Monday. The complete archives of that newsletter are available at adafruitdaily.com. It highlights the latest in Python on hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or projects, you can edit next week's draft on GitHub. Uh, you can submit a pull request with your changes to that draft file. Uh, or if you'd like, you can email to cpnews at adafruit.com or tag a post with hashtag CircuitPython on Mastodon, Blue Sky, or X. Uh, so next up, I will tell you about the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka, which will be our next section. So this is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status update. We'll talk about the project overall and then separately discuss the core, the libraries, and Blinka. 
So first up, we will talk about overall. I will make a timestamp here. So overall this week, across uh, all the libraries and repos involved in CircuitPython, we had uh, 26 pull requests merged by 15 different authors, uh, which both seem pretty high to me, so that's really cool to see. Um, there are a number of names here that were newer or perhaps just less um, you know, frequent, less um, noticeable to my mind. That's not really the word I want, but I'll uh, skip past it for now. Uh, so of these 15 authors, the names that were less familiar, I think that's what I was going for, the names that are less familiar to me, which might indicate them being newer or less frequent contributors, uh, or just be uh, something that I'm not familiar with as well. Uh, those names this week are uh, Pontus O, um, Aaron W. Morris, uh, Kai Zellen, uh, Matthew Badao, uh, M. Paul, and Sanhu88. Uh, so again, huge thanks to those folks who might be newer or less frequent, and as well, thanks to all of the other folks who do have names uh, that I recognize being in these lists uh, on more frequent occasion. Um, uh, in Across all of the uh, projects this week, we had seven reviewers. So thanks to those folks. It does look like mostly um, the usual suspects. So thanks to our team of great reviewers. And there were 16 issues closed by seven people, as well as eight new issues opened up by seven people. Uh, so net uh, down, actually, a little bit on issues across the board. Um, next up, I will pass it over to Scott, if you're available, to tell us about the core. Totally. Thank you, Tim. Okay, numbers for the core. So this is the C core of CircuitPython that runs your Python code. Uh, we had 18 pull requests merged, which is quite a lot. Um, new folks were all already mentioned by Tim. Uh, three reviewers. Uh, props to Microdev for doing some reviewing this week, along with Dan and I. Uh, we have 18 open pull requests, so we're comfortably on under the like one page, one page goal of 25. Uh, issues wise, we had 12 closed issues by five people and four open by three people, so we're net down eight, which is great. Uh, we have a total of 737 open issues. Uh, we track. Adafruit funded prioritization via the milestone system on GitHub. Um, and the two milestones that we're primarily looking at now are 91X and 920. 91X has three open issues and 920 has four. Um, we're going to want to drive those down uh, so that we can get 92 out the door. And then we had three issues not assigned to milestone at the time of these stats, but I suspect that they've been done uh, given that these stats are taken kind of at the end of a weekend. So that's where we're at for the core. All right. Thank you, Scott. Next up, I will tell you about the CircuitPython libraries. All of the CircuitPython libraries can be found on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore and then the name of whatever library it is. Uh, these tend to be either driver libraries that help you interface with some particular uh, piece of hardware or helper libraries that allow you to create a project um, and not worry about as many of the little complex details involved in some of these things. Um, across all of those libraries this week, we had eight pull requests merged by five authors. Uh, and uh, yeah, I read the names that were newer to me a bit earlier. Um, we had five re reviewers for those um, authors as well. So thank you to our reviewers this week. Um, the pull requests that were merged, the oldest one was 22 days old. The newest handful were down at one day. And that leaves us at the end of the week with 34 pull requests open, the oldest of which is a 767-day uh, draft, the newest of which is actually three days, uh, yeah, three days this week instead of one. Um, and then issues-wise, we had three closed issues by two people with two new issues opened up by two people. That leaves us with 883 open issues across all these libraries. And there are 102 of those that are labeled good first issues, which you can find over at circuitpython.org slash contributing, uh, which is the website where you should head to if you are interested in getting involved with CircuitPython. On that page at circuitpython.org slash contributing, you'll find a list of open PRs and open issues. Um, what you can do if you're looking to get involved is take a look uh, through the list of open PRs is usually where we point uh, folks towards first. Uh, find something that is either of interest to you or that you've got the hardware for uh, that you feel like you can um, take a look at and click through to GitHub, take a look at the changes in that PR. Um, you can have a look over the code for syntax, uh, sell it, spelling, et cetera. Leave a comment on GitHub letting us know that you looked it over and what you found. Uh, if you did have the hardware and you're able to run it on some device, also note that in your comment, let us know how it went. 
Um, and if you get comfortable with that process, we can also get you leveled up to leave official reviews there on GitHub if that's something that you are interested in. Um, if you would like to move on to actually contributing some of your own changes, uh, again, circuitpython.org slash contributing. If you click over to the list of open issues there, you'll find a list of uh, open issues against all the different libraries that we have in the CircuitPython ecosystem. Again, you can find something in that list that is either interesting to you or that you've got some hardware that you'd be able to test and develop with. Click through to GitHub, figure out what the issue is, whether it's a, a bug fix or a new feature or adding a new example or what have you, um, and then go ahead and attempt to make that change and submit a PR with it. Uh, if you need help with that process, we've got a guide on the Adafruit Learn system for contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub. Uh, we also have folks who are around throughout the week on Discord who are more than happy to help get you spun up. So if you would like to uh, get started contributing or reviewing, but you feel there is some uh, roadblock for you in the terms uh, of Git or GitHub or any of the version control systems, um, just join us on Discord. Say, hey, let us know what you're up to. Let us know uh, what you're having trouble with, and we'd be happy to try to get you unblocked. Um, in terms of the library PyPI PI weekly download stats this week, uh, we had... 284,372 PyPI downloads across the 333 libraries that are published. The top 10 list is here in the notes document if you would like to take a look over it. And then for new and updated libraries in the last seven days, I'll tell you about the ones in the community bundle. The, uh, uh, the new library this week is a Pi build hat library over in, in that community bundle. And then a couple updates to community libraries, the noise, CircuitPython noise library and the Piper Blockly library both received updates this week. Uh, and that is it for library land. And I will take the next timestamp and uh, I will also tell you about Blinka here. All right, yes. Uh, so Blinka is the CircuitPython compatibility layer for Raspberry Pi and other single board computers. It allows you to use CircuitPython code and projects on those, uh, or I should say maybe in those other contexts, such as on a Raspberry Pi uh, or a different kind of single board computer, uh, as well as with MicroPython devices. Um, across the Blinka repos this week, uh, we did have no pull requests merged, no authors, no reviewers, and that leaves us with six uh, that are open to take a look at. There was one issue closed by one person with two new issues opened up by two people, uh, leaving a total of 107 open issues. The PyPI downloads uh, for the last week were 28,559, and the PyWheels downloads in the last month were 19,116, and the number of supported boards currently by Blinka is 146 boards. And with that, I will take next timestamp and tell you about our next section, which is the Hug Reports section. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight the folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. Uh, we'll go down, uh, well, I should say I'll start, and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you're text only or missing the meeting, then I'll read your notes for you um, Yeah, uh, as we get to you in the list. So I will get us kicked off here after I take a... Uh, timestamp. I had a group hug this week, and then I'll add real quick thanks to Paul Cutler for posting links uh, during the news section. Posting links. Uh, and uh, next up is Dan, and after that is Scott. Okay, I just have one thing. Thanks to Scott uh, uh, for doing most of the <clears throat> updating of the ESP IDF I2C driver. He started that work a while ago, and then it had to be put on hold. And so I took it over and I was very pleasantly, it was very pleasant to find that most of the work had been done already. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, and next up uh, this week, short list is uh, Scott. Uh, thanks, Tim. First, a uh, hug to you for debugging the community bundle build failure. And then also a hug report to Retired Wizard for adding SDI support to ESP. Um, and as a bonus uh, hug for them, they also added two board tweaks that use settings.toml to configure for board variants. For example, a board that has two different screen sizes. Um, they have it default to the smaller one. It kind of works on both, but allows uh, you to set the display width from settings.toml now, which is neat. So thanks to Retired Wizard for that. Yeah, that is really cool, actually, to have those different variations. Cool. Uh, all right. Next up, I will tell you about our next section, which is status updates. 
Status update, excuse, the, excuse me, status updates is our time to tell folks what we've been up to uh, individually. I'll start uh, and then we'll go through the list again alphabetically or as they appear in the notes doc. When I call on you, you can take a couple of minutes, tell us what you've been uh, working on since the last meeting and what you'll be up to until the next meeting. This is also a good time to provide uh, tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If a discussion becomes too long for status updates, then we can move it to in the weeds. So I will get us kicked off here uh, after I take a timestamp. So last week I implemented uh, fixes and submitted PRs to resolve all the open issues in the library and guide uh, screenshot utility. Uh, there were a couple smaller ones and a couple that were a little bit trickier, uh, but those are all in uh, now. Um, I worked on over the weekend. Uh, I continued to, something I started a little a uh, couple of weeks back, and I've been kind of slowly plugging away at it, getting closer and closer, uh, which is the shape intersection function. So it can tell you whether or not two shapes uh, intersect. Um, and the new bits that I've completed are the polygon circle check, which also included a number of uh, sort of more primitive checks that get used inside of that polygon circle check, checking lines against circles and things like that. Um, so we're getting closer. The last major one that I have my eye on is um, polygon and rectangle intersection. And then um, I think that's it for intersection for me at the moment. Um, the other stuff that I've been getting into uh, this week, um, today, this morning, mostly looking into an issue with the community bundle, which uh, popped up a couple of days ago and prevented the build. Uh, and after chasing uh, that down to its root root cause, um, I have a new thing to work on, uh, which will be try to make the build tool more forgiving uh, when it fails to build the libraries that are in third-party bundles like the community uh, bundle so that we can have it um, just note somewhere, maybe open issue, or maybe just leave a note somewhere where we can find it that there was a problem with a specific library, uh, but then actually go ahead and continue to build the bundle so that it doesn't break uh, anything else in the infrastructure. Just that one library will, will not work until it gets fixed. Um, and next up, I will send it over to Dan. Okay, thanks. Okay, so as mentioned, I released CircuitPython 914 and 920 beta 0 last week. And as, as Tim noted, they uh, share a number of bug fixes. Um, right now, I'm working on updating CircuitPython to use uh, the new I2C driver in ESP IDF, which is the base software development kit that we use for um, Espresso. Uh, the Espresso port in CircuitPython. So um, as I mentioned, Scott had already started working on updating to the new driver. The old driver is now deprecated, but we couldn't do that yet because the ESP32 camera library, which is used internally for the Pi camera module, hadn't been updated to use the new IPC driver yet. And you could only use one driver or the other. You couldn't mix them. So um, there has now been the <laughs> camera library has now been updated. Use the new driver, um, and I uh, getting that to work right now. It's a bit of a problem because uh, it assumes that you're on. It's on uh, ESP IDF version 5.4, which isn't actually released yet, and assumes there's some code that exists that doesn't isn't in 5.3.1. But I think I can just copy paste that code over temporarily into our code and and not have to change the library right now. Or I'll, I'll change the library. We have our own fork of the library anyway. Um, in addition, this update seems to fix some um, uh, I2C issues, some of which were more longstanding and some of which re recently showed up when we updated ESP IDF. So all in all, it seems like it's going to work out well, and it's going to fix two or three different bugs that are uh, holding up 920. So that means that we're getting close to finishing 920. And after this, I'll continue to work on those last few bugs. OK. Nice. Thank you, Dan. Uh, next up, we will hear from Scott. All right. Uh, so pretty simple status update for me. I'm continuing my work on Circuit Matter, uh, which is the Python implementation of the matter spec. I fixed some encoding issues last week, and now the commissioner thinks one of my path structs is incomplete, um, which is progress, because <laughs> it couldn't parse it at all before. So uh, now we're getting some higher level errors here, and uh, I'm plugging through it, uh, working to get uh, my fake device commissioned. 
out into the world. So slow and steady progress on circuit matter is, is my main thing this week. Nice. Thank you, Scott. Uh, next up would be the in the weeds section, which I'll tell you briefly about, but we don't seem to have any topics, so we'll probably skip past it pretty quick. Uh, as a reminder, though, in the weeds would be an opportunity for some more long form discussion. Those can either come out of status updates or be identified ahead of time and put into the notes stock. But as noted, we don't have any topics for this week, so we will skip on to the wrap up. Um, Let's see here. Yes, as a reminder, this has been the CircuitPython Weekly for September 23rd, 2024. Thanks to everyone who participated. If you want to help support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of the meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be made available on major podcast services. It will also get featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which you can visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to. The next meeting is at the usual time next week on Monday, uh, the 30th of September at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. And this meeting, as always, gets held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. To be notified of the meeting and any changes to the day or time, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonista's role on Discord, and then we'll send out pings when there are changes to that schedule. Uh, so that's it for this week. Thanks, for, uh, thanks again to everyone who participated, and we hope to see you all next week.